Pottery peeps. So I have two kilns to unload today. Um, I've actually been suffering from a migraine for the last two weeks. So excuse the bags under the eyes and the hair that's a mess. I just can't deal with my hair or even put it up right now. But I got my second shot. I got another shot last night. Um, the second one in a week. And I get a CAT scan next week. Woohoo! Um, I don't suffer from migraines. And I am... Whoa, boy, do I have empathy for you guys that do. My sister does and has since I was a, or since she was a teenager. And um, I think I can count on one hand how many I've had in my life. And so I haven't been throwing on the wheel. I've been doing a lot more hand building. Um, I've got a big show coming up on September 16th. In fact, um, Kate and Sandy, I will list their Instagram so you can get um, Kate, Sandy, and Mickey um, are all doing the show with me. Springville used to be known as Art City, so there's a lot of artists here, and um, it's September 16th. <laughs> Chasing my words, can you tell? <laughs> um, also, when they give me drugs, I don't sleep, so all night or last night. Second one in a row, by the way. Just kind of doing cat naps. Uh, and to tell you how bad the migraine was, this kiln was ready to unload yesterday. And I just looked at the top and left it. <laughs> so um, we'll figure out what's going on. I usually get headaches when the weather changes and the weather's been kind of weird. We got Hillary that came up here um, two weeks ago and or 10 days ago or 10 days ago. It'll be two weeks today that I've had a migraine. So that's when the weather started getting really weird here. And um, I just normally I can take care of it with Tom all not this time. Anyway, that's we're just that's back burner. So um, I'm not on social media. I've been told to be off screens. So, but uh, videos I like doing. So I will spend the time to do the video <laughs> because I'm really enjoying this community that we're building and how we're helping each other. And I just I absolutely love that potters. You guys are the best types of people. You know, I have never met a potter I didn't like. So anyway, I have a bisque kiln to unload that I need to get glazing on. And then I've got the glaze kiln to unload. And the glaze kiln, I've already got half of it glazed to go back in. And I hope to work on that today as I can. <laughs> but let's go ahead and get you set up for the glaze so you can see some of the stuff I did. Um, really excited. This was a um, cone six, and I already know there's two problems here on the top shelf. I um, fired a whole bunch of bowls in this. Um, the I did one bowl in another kiln, uh, I guess a couple weeks ago, three weeks or so ago, and I loved it. So I've got a lot of bowls in here trying to reproduce what I did, but I have some crawling right there. So it didn't cover right there. So this goes for a refire. So um, I did cream over the bowl. I left the middle without any cream and I did swipes of um, nebula, uh, shadow blue, Norse blue over the cream, and then a swipe of pearl white. I think that's what I did, pretty sure. So I've got it hopefully um, it turned out great, just crawled. So hopefully um, the others are better. Okay, before I get to this, because I've got a problem over here, um, let me show you these. And I plan to do a tutorial on them. These are my version of more of a fairy-like mushroom or a witchy Halloween mushroom. And I used a lot of the Mako uh, crystal glazes. This one is, um, I believe it was black, the pitch black clayscapes underneath. And then I did a really heavy coat of the, um, enchanted forest actually over it, which is, that's where I got the greens coming in and some of the blacks and crystals. I was hoping for some of those little yellow ones but I didn't get them but super cool it's 
So the way I threw these is I threw them in two pieces. And uh, this was a closed form. And then I um, pushed this into it so I had a, a space for this to go in. You can see that it's hollow. And I glazed them, glaze fused them in the kiln. And I knew that I'd probably get some movement. And I did on some of them. Oh, and this is winter woods on the bottom. But I plan to do a tutorial on this too, because they just turned out awesome. And I'll have pictures at the end. So I've got like five of these in here. This one is sandstone on the bottom, but I put black on this little skirt. And um, then I've got uh, um, patina. Um, oh, this is hard chasing words. <laughs> uh, which is why I told you about the migraines because I'm probably going to be um, word chasing during this kiln. Um, yeah, it's a satin patina, copper satin patina from Clayscapes. And then I did royal purple on the top and it's kind of cool that I got black where they met it's kind of interesting but another one that I glaze fused all right so this one so this is what I kind of figured might happen so it was straight up and down when I put it in the kiln but I actually really really like it that it's kind of cockeyed and this was a really heavy coat of Aurora Green. And I have Aurora Green in a dippable, and I literally reached into the bottom of the bucket and grabbed the crystals out and really coated this with crystals. And I even got a really fun drip right there. And then this is sandstone. And again, I put a lot of, of the sandstone crystals on this. But this one might be my favorite. This one was done with Night Moth on the bottom and then the um, Blue Hydrangea on the top. And again, I put a lot of crystals on this. Oh, they're so fun. All right, <clears throat> let me get some other stuff because I had one, this one over here that you can't really see. It actually tipped over and glaze fused itself to my pumpkin. Hold on a second. Okay, so I'm gonna grab these mugs that are under here. I knew this one might run, so I did put it up on a stilt. And so then I only have to grind that drip off. I find it's much easier with these advancer shelves to grind a drip <laughs> rather than a boil, a whole bunch of boiled glaze. And um, I have a mold, silicone mold for this mermaid. And then I sculpted the tail and I used shadow blue, coastal blue, clayscapes, did some swipes of um, seaweed. And then the handle, either Deep Sea or Storm by um, Amico. But yeah, I wanted to do one mug before I played with this some more. I like it. So this, I have, Another video that I'll probably be putting up um, in a while. I'm actually, thank goodness, I'm ahead with videos. Um, with I, I was really prolific a couple of weeks ago and did a bunch of videos. And um, we've been doing some silk screens in the studio. Sandy's son is a an amazing artist, and I will list his, um, I think, list his uh, Instagram so you can see his artwork but he um, let us borrow a silk screen that he had that he had made um, with this raven and I've already the I did colors underneath I painted trees and I put on mountains and kind of did a scene then did the raven and um, I can see the colors through the raven so that's good to know before I do any more <laughs> so I'm gonna have to try it again but I still like it. It's still very cool. And that was a hand-built mug. All right, so a lot of you, we all follow the same people. <laughs> and uh, with Vaughn's challenge for us to 
do our part to save the planet and make fish for people in our area. I've been making fish. I love fish. So this is one of the fish that I've made off of his tutorials and I'll link that video that he put up if you haven't seen or don't follow Vaughn, you need to. He is so knowledgeable. He's been at this over 40 years and it just so willing to share um, ideas and so forth, but he's mailing fish all over the world. So he wants us to do our part so he doesn't have to mail them all over the world. Oh, colors. Um, either deep sea or storm. This I think is lavender, amico, amico. Um, I did seaweed on this and I did seaweed here, but I also threw in some some palladium. This is wasabi, chung plum, I think sky for the eye, but I put black underglaze in the eye too. So, and I asked my daughter um, who has my has three of my grandkids that if I don't sell any fish in this area because we're landlocked and of course my fish are probably going to be a little bit more tropical than the trout around here um, if I could decorate the kids bathroom with them and she said I could so it gives me carte blanche to make as many fish as I want and just cover their bathroom all right so let's see if I can get these two apart without making them worse so I did a pumpkin platter with um, a, this might take some surgery. Um, oh, and you can see here my mushroom top moved on my stem and fell against the platter and is, <laughs> you just never know what you're gonna get. So, <laughs> See if I can't get those apart. I did hibiscus gloss, amico, and um, holly green by Spectrum. Those are the colors here. And uh, black on, on the stem of the mushroom. Actually, this looks like it's the Enchanted Forest. I'm not sure. Um, I probably should have taken some notes. I don't know what that other one is now. Um, anyway, so I think the mushroom isn't going to make it and, uh, I might show it at the end of the video. <laughs> you know, a part of learning is showing the failures and this is definitely a failure. If I can get them apart, I might be able to fix it. Well, guess what? <laughs> I don't need a show. I just hit it on the bottom of the shelf where I was going to put it. They fell off. So what I'm going to do is I'm going to grind both of these down because it didn't take a big chip, just took a sliver and sliver stuck on there. So I'm going to grind them off, see if I can't reglaze them. So. And then these are some, I've been doing a lot of ornaments lately and ooh. Well, that one is stuck to the kiln. Little gnome ornaments. And these are done with stencils by um, Sharon Hoppy Designs. And I did these with, um, this one was done with underglaze, red underglaze and uh, colors for earth for the face and the nose. And then sky here. And this one was done with the red colored slip. I put that in. So I just wanted to see the, which way, which way I liked differently. So when I did this stencil in the greenware, I put the colored slip in this one. I just went ahead and bisked and then did it. So it's kind of cool. I get more color here because it does the, I get a positive and a negative depending on which way I do it. That's kind of cool. And then this one, oh, you know what? I had glaze drip down from that platter and it dripped on the ornament and so that's going to take a screwdriver. So I have a couple of more ornaments here. That's interesting. I wonder why it did that. So this one was done with the slip but I got some 
texture there. Hmm. Um, these were done on porcelain, but the slip is B-mixed, so maybe that's why. Interesting. And then this one was done with underglazes, and I did the fire brick red around the... This one was done with slip, too. Ooh, lots of crawling on that. For some reason, I have a lot of fall weddings. And that... Oh, no. That's not crawling. I did black, pitch black and this was not covered with black and i actually just dipped it in the coastal blue it looks like crawling but it's not it's the coastal blue so obviously i need to not do that again make sure my rim's covered in black too before i put the coastal blue because i like the blue the coastal blue on the black goes this really pretty blue so this one i did shadow blue with the cream and I did black on the rim. So I did shadow blue, black on the rim, and then cream. That's much prettier. And then cream on the outside. Very nice. Okay, so that one gets meh. I really don't like refiring. I just broke a heart bowl, lifted up the shelf, and kiln or post was stuck to it. Ah, hate these stupid mistakes. So that one was done just like that other one that I showed you that turned out. You know, when your head hurts, you just don't think straight. Can I break these guys? No. Okay. So some little pinch pot pumpkins and I'm gonna have to grind that guy off and um, this was done with the hibiscus gloss and the holly green okay so another one of these bowls okay so why and I got crawling on this one too right there usually crawling happens if um, your glaze is too thick so We'll have to refire this one too. I also placed all these with the migraine, so maybe maybe I should be doing glazing with the migraine. Just not being careful enough. All right. So this is the dip with the blue or no the wild aster. Playscapes. A couple of more ornaments done with um, sky, holly green, and this one was done with the green slips and the red slip. This one was just done with the holly green, and, the, and then the nose and the cheeks are colors for earth, Paul McCoy's. And then these, these are all in porcelain. And I wanted a, Scan a Scandinavian type of um, ornament. And so I have a silk screen. I did them, I probably need a heavier coat. I did them with the ruby slippers with the stroke and coat in the greenware and then just did the clear over the top. And then another little fish. I went heavier on the palladium. I'm always worried about that palladium, um, but it worked on this one. I'm always worried it's going to run, and it did a little bit on the back, but that won't matter. And then this is the blue hydrangea, either that deep sea or storm amico, and the lips were the chung plum. Hey. I got one. No crawling on this one. 
Wow, that's pretty. Yeah, I really like that. Got some stuff to just clean up there. But wow. That is very, very pretty. I will take pictures of these too. It's probably my new favorite glaze combo. And this one too. Kind of looks like the sky after a storm. Or the evil eye. <laughs> All right. Do you have one thing of Mickey's in here? And this is the Malibu Barbara, but it's not a real heavy coat. If you'll notice in the last kiln, we got pinholings, pinholes. No pinholes on this one. So maybe she had too much glaze on those. You learn something new every single time you um, fire a kiln. All right, so this is interesting. These are all done with the uh, ruby red slippers. And this is done with the red slip. Um, clear glaze over the top. I like the red slip better. Good to know. I have some blue and white ones that need to come in the kiln. So this is going to be Saturday's tutorial. Um, I can't do a tutorial like Vaughn did on the fish because that's his tutorial. But I watched his tutorial last, wasn't this Saturday, it was the last Saturday, the Saturday before. And my daughter-in-law, Bethany, um, has a betta fish and her betta fish died on Sunday. And I got to thinking, let's do a betta fish for Bethany. And um, this is actually the colors of her betta fish sushi that she just lost. And this is the color of the one she just bought. And these ones I didn't put holes in them, but I put the Narakomi wires so that they can be hung because they're smaller. And um, I really like the betta fish. So um, Saturday's tutorial, We'll be on making some beta fish. <laughs> hmm. So this was, um, it covered it up. It had a leaf texture in it and it was just a hand built tray. Um, it was a holly green. No, Tim Stark Celadon, but I don't remember what I put on here. Must have been something I had close. <laughs> and then this is a Christmas tray, and I rolled in trees. And this is done with the spruce blue at a cone six. Spruce blue is kind of like a semi or a satin, but on a cone six, you get these little micro crystals growing and you get it glossier because it's hotter. I like that. That's cool. You know what? I probably put spruce blue. I did. I put spruce blue over the Tim Stark Celadon. And then here is, ah, dang it. I got a little dot of crawling right there. Actually, it's covered by the clear underneath. But a little bit of a blemish on this really big one. This big one's probably 13. 14 inches across and uh, so um, cream Norse blue and then I left the middle unglazed I didn't put any cream here and then I did a swipe of um, nebula shadow blue and then did a couple of swipes here of the um, pearl white and then the Norse is over the cream so Either I didn't have enough glaze and it crawled, or I had too much glaze. I'm thinking it's not enough, actually, because I'm actually painting with a brush the dippable glazes, and sometimes you don't get enough when you do that. I try to do at least a coat and a half, but um, I'm also was trying not to drip all the way around. 
but wow that is stunning and I did um, trim a foot on this so that a wire could be uh, wrapped around it so there's a lip there so it could be hung okay so that's it for this one now I get to clean this up and unload the bisque and get going on that and um, I will take pictures of these and so you can see them at, at the end of the video all right okay I hope you can get muddy hope you're doing great praying for you guys in um, Florida Georgia and North Carolina with um, the hurricane that's coming through so please be safe and we will catch you in the next video get muddy.